Hi, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. I give you a few more seconds so that everyone can, can join. Welcome to this webinar where we are going to talk about um, a topic that you, you might have already heard about, about this, artificial intelligence in, in pedagogy. And we are going to talk about how to create multiple choice questions and flashcards, so pedagogical content in just a few seconds using artificial intelligence. So that's the topic of today. I see that a few more people are joining. So I give you a few more seconds and we will start. Hi, one. Okay, let's, let's start. Welcome to this webinar. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks for joining us uh, today for this webinar about AI and, and pedagogy. My name is Fabian. I'm the head of Canadian market here at WooClap. I'm based in, in Montreal. And so I'm going to host this webinar uh, today with my teammate, Vendry. Hi, Fabian, and hi, everyone. Uh, so I am Vendril. I am head of product at WooClub. So my team's mission basically is to understand the needs of our users, the users of our different platforms, so WooClub, WooFlash, and QuizWizard, and to work with developers to create the best learning tools um, uh, possible. But before we start, maybe I think that there might some, be some people today that are not very familiar with WooClub and with what we do. So maybe that Fabian can give us uh, a short introduction to, to who we are. Yeah, sure. So basically, WooClub is an ed tech company uh, that builds pedagogical platforms that aims at helping you engage students and <clears throat> turn them into active participants throughout their entire learning journey. And so we do this with two different platforms, uh, WooClap, which is a live polling platform that you're going to have the chance to um, test uh, today, and WooFlash, which is an intelligence micro learning platform. So two different platforms, WooClub for live polling and WooFlash for um, asynchronous uh, micro micro learning. Thank you. And so we are here together for, for I think, about 30 minutes, um, maybe a bit more. And so I really encourage you during the, this time to ask any question you might have uh, during the webinar in the dedicated section that is at the bottom right, I think, of your screen, uh, which is called questions. And so we'll make sure to answer them uh, at the end of the webinar if they have not been answered during the presentation. So let's get started with the agenda for uh, today. If you want Vendry, to move on to the next slide, thanks. So here's the agenda for, for today. So we wanted to start with, we wanted to take a step back and share with you how and why we started working on, on this project, Quiz Wizard. Uh, that we are very excited to, to present you. So we're going to explain you a bit of the background uh, around uh, Quiz Wizard. Um, then we are going to dive into AI and see how we can create quizzes with, with AI. You might have already tested it, uh, and you might know that it's not actually that easy uh, to create quizzes and to use them in your, in your teaching. So we're going to discuss about, about that. And then last but not least, uh, we are going to show you Quiz Wizard, our latest innovation, and see how you can create pedagogical content from any topic or course material using uh, AI, using this Quiz Wizard tool. So uh, let's get started with uh, this webinar. So first, I uh, wanted to share you how we started working on this, um, on this, on this project. We, we wanted to get back to basics when we started on, on this project. And so we asked ourselves this very simple, very basic question, how does learning happen? What does learning actually uh, mean? Basically, what happens when you learn, so your brain is composed of neurons, like you have around 100 billion neurons on your, in, your, in your brain, and all of them are connected. So you have this very dense network of, of neurons. When you learn, basically, you create new connections when you learn something new. You strengthen new connections when you um, uh, reinforce uh, uh, knowledge and some, some concepts. Some connections can disappear when you forget something or can become weaker uh, when, when you forget uh, any, uh, any, any concept. But basically, learning means that you change the connections between your neurons inside your brain. And so basically, you change your brain when you, when you learn. There we, there's one thing that is 
crucial uh, to make this process of learning and of changing your brain that um, to to happen, which is the, uh, the fact of activating your, your neurons. In order to change your brain, you, you need to activate uh, your neurons. Um, and so for for this to happen, you have to be active, basically, in your uh, in the in the learning process. And I think that what's really interesting here is that there there are a lot of ways to activate your neurons. Is that it? Is that it? Yeah, and I wanted to share with you maybe two different ways to activate the the neurons and to to make this learning process happen. The first one is to um, answer a question. When you're a student and you're just passively listening to your uh, teacher, you're not in an active uh, position, and so you actually don't activate your brain that that much. Answering questions uh, help. Uh, being in that active uh, position. So how can you answer questions? You have a lot of different ways to, uh, to do this. One of them is quizzes, basically. So that's a very effective and powerful uh, teaching tool. So what do we mean by quiz? You have a lot of different things behind this, um, this, this term of, of quiz. So you have live quizzes that you can use uh, during your courses, for example, using a live polling tool such as WooClap. You can uh, suggest your students to answer asynchronous uh, quizzes um, as well. You can do this with our tool WooFlash, for example. When you talk about quizzes, we often think about multiple choice questions, but you can actually do much more. Um, on WooClap, for example, you have 20 different types of uh, interactive activities uh, that you can use to build a very broad diversity of, of questions within your, your, your quiz. You can use your quiz at the beginning of the course, at the end of the course. You can ask a few quiz questions uh, here and there during, during your, your course. You can offer high stakes quizzes, low stakes quizzes. So you have actually lots of different things and lots of different tools that you can use in your teaching behind this simple word of quiz. So that's the first way uh, to uh, become active in the learning process. The second uh, very effective learning uh, strategy that students can use is what we call retrieval practice. So what we call retrieval practice basically is making the effort of remembering a piece of uh, information. That's a very powerful way uh, to uh, increase your knowledge and to reinforce your um, any, any concepts and, and knowledge. Um, there is one tool uh, to do this, wh which is quite effective, which are flashcards, basically. Uh, so at the very beginning, now you have digital versions of flashcards, but at the very beginning, uh, it was basically just a card, um, uh, in pay like a paper card, uh, where you had, let's say, uh, a word, a definition, uh, a word in a, in a foreign language, and then uh, at the verso of the card, you, you had the um the definition or or anything else and so you had to make the effort of finding the answer before having the, the feedback having the right answer and the feedback on the other side of um of the flashcards and those are very efficient tools flashcards and, and quizzes but uh one might think that they need to be created before they can be used and the students could create the those flashcards and those quizzes themselves but what we observe is quite different because most of the time uh, students will wait for the, the teacher to provide them with this content uh, instead of creating it by themselves. And I think that on the other side, uh, as a teacher, you might also want to ensure the quality of the content that uh, students are using to learn and so they can really rely on it. And maybe you'd better prepare it for yourself uh, and that and that's where a lot of times uh, there, there's an issue because uh, student teachers sorry don't have time uh, to create those quizzes. Yeah, basically, as a teacher, most of the time you will have to create this learning material, which is very powerful for your students. But the risk, I know, everyone is very busy. You have a lot of different things to to do, and so if you have to create quizzes and flashcards on top on every of everything else, then you might end like SpongeBob here. Uh, a bit tired because it's definitely a lot of a lot of work because if you let's say you want to create a quiz actually there is a lot of things be behind the scene um when you create a quiz first you have to um define the the learning objectives of of this of this quiz then you have to write relevant questions um, and to formulate it in an appropriate way then you have to prepare the precise answer like the right answer of the of the quiz then you have to write the 
distractors, which are basically the wrong answers uh, on a multi in a multiple choice questions. It's actually not that easy if you don't want it to be, if you want it to be really uh, effective for for your students. And so, of course, we would love to offer our students quizzes and flashcards for each and every course because we know that it's a very powerful way for them to learn. Uh, but uh, actually, it takes time to prepare this uh, this content, or maybe I should say it used to take time because that was before a small revolution happened. That was uh, last fall with um, the new version of ChatGPT and the um, and the, the new innovations in in artificial intelligence. And maybe Vendée, I'll give you the mic for for this. Yes, and then last summer, I think it was at the end of the summer. Uh, we experienced the, the release of ChatGPT, uh, which is a tool developed by the company, uh, a company called OpenAI. And so I don't think we, we need to provide a very lengthy introduction to, to what ChatGPT is. But for those who are less familiar, maybe with this tool, just remember that it's a chatbot with whom you can have a real conversation and to whom you can ask to write about almost everything. So just to give you a few examples uh, that I tested, you can ask uh, ask it to write a blog article in biomechanics, it's a very specific topic. Uh, you can ask it to write your next social media post. Uh, you can ask it even uh, that, that was something very funny. Uh, as I asked ChatGPT to write a fictional debate between Mario and Luigi about the real, the true recipe for carbonara pasta. So very diverse type of content, diverse topics, and ChatGPT is able to do all of this in a few seconds only, and that's very impressive. And given its capabilities, I think that ChatGPT seems to be a very good way to, to transform the way many people do their job. And so ChatGPT made a significant impact in the press, and that's what we would like to assess with you right now, but as, by asking you this, um, this, simple, uh, this simple question that is here. For you, what is ChatGPT? So I ask you to connect to this WooClap event. Uh, so you can go to wooclap.com and fill in the code quiz wizard on the top banner, or you can also uh, flash this QR code uh, that is displayed on the screen. And I think that in the chat, we'll also post the direct link to this WooClap event. And you can answer this question for you. ChatGPT is just something that you have uh, something that you have not heard about yet, maybe something that you have tested. Uh, I think the third option is something that is quite convenient, but that uh, didn't change your life. And the last option is something is a tool that it's a tool that you are uh, you've been using every day uh, since uh, you tried it. I can see here that we have uh, 40, 46 people and 30 people that have answered the question. So let's see what you what you answered. So we have two people that never heard about, with, about uh, ChatGPT. Uh, nice. So that's the, the first one, I encourage you to, to go to, to ChatGPT and test it by yourself. Um, 30 people have tried it. And for some of them, it's convenient, but it's not a tool that changed their life. And for 30%, uh, it's a tool that they use uh, every day. So what this poll uh, basically means is that almost everyone here has already heard and tried uh, ChatGPT. I'm impressed by the fact that 30% of you use ChatGPT every day. That's amazing. Yeah, really. Yeah. And I think that uh, you can imagine that when we are uh, working at WooClub and we are a, tool, a company that builds two platforms that rely on quizzes, well, we went ahead and we tried creating quizzes uh, with ChatGPT. And as expected, uh, it, it works quite well, uh, very impressive. Impressive. So you can see here um, some MCQs that I generated about the, the American Revolutionary War. And I, I was really impressed that that's very good. And I think that Fabien, you, you, you were interested in how to create MCQs with ChatGPT. And you even wrote a guide uh, on that topic that was translated and that was even published by uh, the University of Quebec in Montreal. And in, in this article, you demonstrate that it's not so easy to create a quiz uh, with ChatGPT. 
Yeah, actually, we played around with ChatGPT to create pedagogical content and see how far you can go with the tool. If you just want to create a few questions as a test, uh, it's quite impressive. But if you want to go one step further and really use this pedagogical material for your courses every day, if you want to scale this, uh, then actually it's much more complicated. You have to uh, craft the right prompts. What we call the prompts are basically the instructions that you uh, send to ChatGPT to create those uh, answers. Um, and if you want to have more complex questions, more complex qu qu quizzes that are adapted to your teaching, you have to go really one, maybe two or three steps for, further on the on your prompts. It's just it's not just a matter of asking like one or two sentences prompts. It's Real matter of creating something which is much more complex. You actually have five different steps that you can use to build those prompts. The first one is to initiate, start the conversation with the, with ChatGPT and provide it with as much context as possible so that the tool knows where you want to when you want to go. Then you have to describe the task as precisely as possible, and that's really important if you want it to uh, give you. Uh, relevant output, you have to be very precise uh, in your instructions. You have to hide the constraints that you um, that you need to clarify your expectations. Once again, be precise and clarify what you expect is really key. Then you have to define the format that you're uh, expecting uh, from the from the tool. ChatGPT can create, generate text, can generate tables, tables, uh, bullet points. Uh, lots of different things, but you have to define it. And then usually you have a first output, but it's not perfect uh, at, the, um, uh, at the first try. And so you have to refine uh, the answers uh, either by asking some follow-up questions uh, to ChatGPT or by taking copy-paste uh, the, the content and then rework on it on your, on your own. So it's actually quite complex to create really relevant pedagogical content using just ChatGPT. Uh, indeed, and that's that's our starting point for creating Quiz Wizard. So Quiz Wizard is designed to easily provide teachers and trainers with the almost endless capabilities of ChatGPT, so that they actually, actually, I mean, actually save time, save hours of work when creating their quizzes. So basically, you can use Quiz Wizard in, th in three st uh, simple steps. So Quiz Wizard allows teachers to create questions in two different ways. Uh, they can start with a simple topic for those who just want to explore the topic or for those who don't have any material uh, on this topic. But you can also start with uh, a support material, such as a PowerPoint or some PDF presentation, some lecture notes in a Word format, for instance, or you can just also copy past some text uh, to QuizUzard. So this topic or this document will serve as the input for creating the, uh, the quiz. Then QuizUzard will be able to generate some questions and the answers to those questions in different ways. The most common is uh, our flashcards and MCQs. And so you have the possibility to directly within QuizWizard modify the content so that it's perfectly adapted to your audience. For instance, you can make it align with the practices that you have with your class, uh, such as the vocabulary, vocabulary that you use. Um, so you can make sure that it's perfectly suited also to your learner's uh, level. And so I think it's also where you as a teacher, you have most of your added value in the creation, in the process of creation, creating a quiz. It's in adapting this content to the very specific needs of your audience, of your class and your learners. So you create the content, you tailor it to your audience. And the last, the, the third step, is to export it to your favorite tools. And I think this is also one of the, the significant strengths of QuizWizard is that it allows you to export the content that is created by the AI to many tools, to the tools that best suit your pedagogical approach. So you can transfer it, of course, to WooClap and to WooFlash. This is what we'll, uh, we'll test together in a few minutes. Uh, but you can also transfer the content to Moodle for those who use Moodle. And you can save it in Word or Excel format on your own computer uh, if you want to save it or if you want, for instance, to also use it uh, in a printed version. So those are the, th very, the three very uh, simple steps to create content with uh, QuizWizard. 
And what I suggest to you is that you, we, we dive into this process together and that we, we create together your first questions with Quiz Wizard. So here you are on Quiz Wizard. So uh, this is a tool that you can also um, access. So uh, we will uh, show you the link uh, at the end of this webinar. And for the purpose of this demonstration, let's say that we are a history teacher at the university level. And so um, I will provide here the subject uh, that we are teaching, the level and the class of my students. For instance, if it's history in higher education, and let's say those are bachelor uh, students. And then I think that among us, there are some people from Europe and Northern America. So let's choose a topic that uh, bring us together and we chose the discovery of America, if it's, uh, if it's okay for you. So here, the topic that I uh, filled is the discovery of America. And so let's start generating our MCQs. Um, as I said before, there are two types of content you can generate, questions like MCQs and flashcards. And we'll start with questions and later uh, we might have time to, to test the flashcards too. Um, as I said, you can generate content based just on the topic, which we could do here with the topic, um, the discovery of America. But I prepared also uh, some notes about this uh, in a Word format. Microsoft Word, so that's what we'll be using to generate uh, the MCQs. So here I have my uh, file, the discovery of America, which I uploaded to Quiz Wizard. And let's say we want uh, to generate four questions and let's hit generate question. So what Quiz Wizard will do now is that it will pass the content that we uploaded to extract some information information and to ask questions about those um, those information. So the whole, those are the questions that Quizzard created. What was the main reason for Europeans seeking new trade routes to, to Asia? Good question. Who provided Christopher Columbus with the financial support for his voyage? Uh, nice. And the two other, what was the name given to the new continent discovered by Amerigo Vespucci? And last, uh, what were the impact of European colonization on the Native American populations? So four questions on four different aspects of the discovery of, um, of America. Those are, I think, nice questions. And what, um, uh, what I said before also is that you can adapt the content to the very specific needs of your, um, uh, of your uh, audience. And so, for instance, you can hear directly what was the main reason for your brands uh, to uh, sell uh, Western, outside to the West. Instance. And so this is something you can do directly within Quizzard before generating the rest of the content. And here, what we'll do is that we'll ask the answers in an MCQ format with one correct answer and three uh, false answers so the distractors that Fabien uh, mentioned um, before. So let's ge generate the answers. Again, what Quiz Wizard is doing now is that it will pass through the, 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 the document that we provided it and to extract the correct answer. And then it will literally invent the, the, uh, the distractors. Um, and again, you'll see you have the possibility to modify each of them, uh, add new uh, answers, be they correct or false, so that it's really uh, it's really perfect for your for your students. So, and we saw in the previous step that you can create multiple choice questions as well as open questions or just the yeah. right answer. Exactly. So here we focused on MCQs, but indeed you can create uh, open questions with the correct answer. If you want to use them, uh, for instance, um, for exams, for instance, so you have also the, the 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 correction, and you can also create just the question and save the question because you don't need the answer. For instance, if you want to use this question as an introduction question to your uh, to your class, that's also a use case that we we have frequently. And so here are the the answers that Quiz Wizard generated. So for the first question, what was the main reason for Europeans to sail to the West, to find new trade routes to the Indies, 
to conquer new lands, spread Christianity, explore new territories, and the correct answer is the first one. And again, for each answer, you can delete it, add another choice, uh, mark a choice as correct, except extra. So very, very, your role here is to adapt, tailor this content so that it's um, relevant uh, to, to your, very relevant to your audience. Once this content is generated, what you can do is to uh, put it aside, so save it to a course that we will call History, the Discovery of America. Yeah. And you have saved those four multiple choice questions, uh, so you'll be able to export it later. And so you can create, so we've, we've done multiple choice questions here, and we can also create flashcards on, on Quiz Wizard, right? Yeah, exactly. So we, if we start from the, the beginning here, we'll stay with this uh, discovery of America topic that we chose. And instead of selecting, instead of selecting question, we'll generate flashcards. And this time, we'll generate content uh, just based on the topic, not based on the document. And that's what we do. So we see that we don't have any, any document here. And let's continue. There are several types of flashcards that you can create with, uh, with Quiz Wizard dates and events, some artworks and authors, some translation flashcards, molecules and formulas, terms and definitions. This one is uh, very used, actually. And we'll make something uh, personalized uh, for this, uh, this example. And so we will ask uh, flashcards with on the recto an explorer. And on the back, uh, there will be the places that this person discovered. And let's generate the, the flashcards. So this time we are not based on a document. So quiz without, we just seek in all the content that he was trained uh, on uh, the, the content to generate those flashcards. And we'll have a list of here, here it is, a list of explorers. And for each explorer, uh, the places that this person discovered, for instance, Christopher Columbus, the Caribbean islands, America Vespucci, Southern America, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So those are the kind of flashcards that we can create. Uh, we could have a date and an event. We could have a civilization and their role in the discovery of America, etc. And again, we can save this content to the course that we created, history, the discovery of America. And you'll find this course here in my courses, discovery of America, and we have 14 questions. We had 10 uh, flashcards and four MCQs. And you are able to export this content. Uh, and that's really, really interesting, I think. Uh, so as we said, you can export it into to VooClap, to VooFlash, and to diverse other formats, uh, Excel, Word, Moodle, XML. And in the future, why not any other formats that's uh, relevant to you? And we encourage you to provide us feedback and to tell us which are the tools that you would like to export this content to and we'll see how, what we can do uh, to, to help you with this. So we'll select WooClap and then you download here um, XLS file that will be importing directly um, to our uh, WooClap event. And to close this uh, demonstration, uh, I suggest that you, you answer one of those uh, questions so here are the questions that we generated. And so um, this question, for instance, who provided Christopher Columbus with the financial support for his voyage? And for those who are still connected to, to the WooClap event, you can answer um, this question uh, just to, to close this demonstration, I think. So for those of you who are already familiar with WooClap, what we do with Quiz Wizard is you just have to export your the content that you created and then import it to, to WooClap and then you're good to go. And so as as Vendry you you showed, it it takes like one minute. So yeah. pretty straightforward. Okay. Thank you, uh, Vendry, for for this this demonstration. It was amazing to see how the the wizard works. Uh, maybe we can move on to your uh, questions in the in the audience. We have a few of a few of them, um, and we have only a few minutes left, so maybe we won't be able to an to answer all questions. Um, there's a question from Anna um, asking. It's available in French and English. 
when would it be available in other languages? Yeah, it's, a, it's a, an excellent question. So at the moment, indeed, it's available in French and English. Uh, we have plans uh, for to, to extend it to all uh, other languages. Uh, in the future, I will not be able to say exactly when, but it's uh, it's something that we we are considering. And if you were able to tell us in which languages you wanted to to quizzes that to work, that would really help us prioritize the diverse languages that we could support. But again, so the, again. the interface of the tool is in French and English, but you can create and generate content in any uh, language, basically. Yeah, have it. Um, well, there is another question from Alan in Vancouver, I think. What about the scholastic pedagogical validity of the questions if you do not provide a document? And what about copyright on the material? Yeah. I think there are two two questions. The first one is about the the validity of the of the, the questions. Um, the role of the, the, the like the, the the role and the added value I think of the teacher is to to make sure that the content makes sense to the audience, and that's uh, their mission actually, and that's why they are teachers because they want to provide knowledge and competencies and valid knowledge and competencies to the audience. So that's the added value with Quizula. So we are helping them creating um, uh, pedagogical material. And then it's also their responsibility. And that's the same job they have to do with Quizula that they have to do with any material that they can find on the internet, in textbooks, et cetera. They always have to make sure that the content makes sense to the audience and is valid. And I think that's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's where they are. Uh, the add value mm -hmm. to, to the students. Maybe one question. To, and, yeah. And for the, the other question, it's a blur. I think it was about the, um, uh, the intellectual property of the content yeah, generated. The copy, copyright, and it's yeah. uh, still copyright, yeah. And it's still a blurry zone uh, in the AI world at the moment. So I think a lot of uh, lawyers and uh, are working on this topic, but I don't think there is a real uh, answer to this question yet, but I'm pretty sure that in the, com in the future that will come. Yeah. Maybe one last question, since we don't have much more uh, time. A question from Antonio. The Quiz Wizard is part of WooClub license, or does it require a new license? Yeah, good question. So for the moment, Quiz Wizard is totally free. So you can, and we will display you the link to Quiz Wizard, so you're, you're able to... Um, you're able to, to go and use it yourself. So it's 100% free at the moment. Uh, it's a separate platform from WooClub and from WooFlash because we wanted the content that is generated to be used. Uh, we wanted this content to be used also on other platforms. So we mentioned Moodle, Excel Word, and in the future, maybe some other. We also wanted to keep all the platforms very simple. And for that, they are specialized. Uh, so it's much easier for teachers to use to use it. I think that you know how important this is to for teachers to 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 use um, simple platforms, simple tools. So for the moment, Quiz Wizard is free. Uh, it might become uh, uh, paying at some point. Uh, this is still an open question. It's on our, our side too, and so for sure, uh, if it had to become paying. Uh, the users of, of our platform, WooClap and WooFlash, will have a, um, a, a special rate uh, on the quiz visa. Thank you, Vanley, for those answers. And I think we are running out of time. So thank you, everyone, for joining this, this webinar. Uh, the link to test Quiz Wizard is in the chat. Thank you, Charlotte, for your uh, support. So uh, go to Quiz Wizard, play around with the tool, uh, share your feedback with, with us. It's very important for us to, um, to hear your thoughts on the, on the platform. If you have any further questions or if you want to react on the, on the webinar, share feedback. I think on the next slide, Vandery, we have our contact detail. Here we are. So you have uh, Vandery and my uh, email address, so feel free um to send us an email if you want to to chat uh and to continue the, the conversation about quiz wizard thanks again for joining this webinar and see you soon on, on quiz wizard and hoping to have the the opportunity to discuss with you about this um this about this tool
Thank, thank you. you, Fabien. Thank you. Thanks, all of you. And have a Goodbye. great day.